on guys, I'm Dan, you're watching DD Speed Shop, and today we're going to modify garnish moldings for your chopped up hot rod. Well, like I said, we're going to modify garnish moldings. So, there's a lot of stuff that's wrong in this hot rod, but you know what? Garnish moldings hide a lot. Now this was originally a four door, we put on these two doors, and this is convertible, well it's four door hard top garnish molding, we're turning into convertible garnish molding. The problem we have, you can see I've already tried to lengthen it with what I had left over. If you look at it, she crooked. I did a terrible job. So step one, we're going to have to splice this, open it up, and re-weld it straight. Now, when this fits properly, we're also a little on the short side. So we got to add a couple inches, so that'll be the fun part. And then we're going to have to cap it, so we're going to start on that. We'll use the workbench. Get started. All right, so step one, we've got a bit of a straight edge problem. So we'll give her a zip, a bend, and a zap on the workbench. Oh, I just broke it right on. Pieces on. So here is where things are gonna get goofy. Good, 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 good. Okay, not bad, not bad. Problem. I caused this problem, but we're gonna live with it. So this is the original door post from a four door uh, hard top, which is obviously quite a bit wider when I put it on. So we got this big gap. Now there's no way we're gonna do anything with it, but I don't wanna have just some goofy thing. So I'm gonna try and do is have this molding, maybe even start there, kind of curve out and be flat there and up and in. So it'll have an oblong shape but uh, they're, it's gonna be like that on both sides. So if we can make them both look goofy, they'll match. So I'm gonna get some uh, steel out of the quarter. And we'll see if we can get it going. <laughs> Here's what we got. So I took a piece of uh, scrap. I put it, well, first in the workbench and then I actually ended up using the, uh, the molding itself and I knocked it around. So it has about the shape. Now what we're gonna try and do is something along those lines so it'll get a little fat so that will that's essentially what I want I'm gonna mark where it is there you know we're gonna try and kind of go that way we're just gonna kind of open that up is the plan so essentially we'll cut that off cut that off it's gonna be at a goopy angle I'll probably cut too big but then we'll be able to put it on there and see just kind of what it looks like. We may end up trimming some of this off that I just welded on, so it'll be all nice and flush. And I don't know, it'll look goofy, but if it looks the right kind of goofy, no one really notices. So let's cut this. So this here is the piece we made, a little oblong, but I think it looks okay. Hopefully this will go good. Okay, I got the panels kind of clamped in place. Uh, door panels are out, there's nothing in the chair I really care about. So that's, hopefully that shows up pretty good. That's what we're going to kind of do. So I'm just going to put a couple of tacks on it real quick. Might be a little on the long side, but you know what? We can uh, make a metal shorter, it's easy, it's, it's that longer part that's a real pain. Okay, so that's kind of what she's going to look like. I don't know whether it's good or bad. Um, I probably will end up running a little edge piece around it just so it has a little bit of strength, otherwise it'll be a little floppy. We're going to take this thing off now. We're going to finish welding there around. I'm going to weld in all these little holes because um, that's where the locks would have been and, and stuff. 
And realistically, we'll have to probably drill some new countersink a few holes and get some fancy screws. Fancy screws, whatever uh, Princess Auto has on sale. And we're gonna body fill this. Body fill it, sand it, make it look nice. So, back to the workbench. It is what it is. I think it kind of takes up some of that. You're not going to get your arm caught on it. I boxed in all the way around. So now it's ready for a schmoo of filler. Uh, all I have to do is just weld in. So I'm going to box this little section as well. Now, what I was fighting out is if I should do something in the center here. So I don't know if you guys have any grandiose ideas. I mean, I could, in all reality, just kind of block it right in. But I don't really want to do that. I could widen this piece the whole width. You know what? That's probably what I should do. I'm gonna do that right now. That was a good idea, Dan. Hopefully you guys don't have a better idea that I'm gonna waste here. But if I widen that, it'll just look a little goofy, but it'll look goofy the whole way back. And then, honestly here, that's gonna, gentle, that's gonna tuck in. And this is screwed in, that's where it's gonna, yeah. Man, brainstorming. So let's measure a piece. Get her in there, that'll be easy. Okay. So I just cut another piece of scrap out. Uh, I really need to get a shear. So I got a shear and I just literally put it on top need to get a shear. What I did was I cut this out on a zip disc and I put a little bend in it and then we'll kind of push that down as we weld. So we got the front panel. You got to kind of hold it where you want it. Ultimately I just started there. So I think we're just going to give it a couple of welds the whole way across. Um, stopped about, awesome, stopped about there. And uh, we should be okay. I'll probably have to do a little bit of a goofy cut there. I'll then have to obviously weld another little angle piece on the back for some strength. And I'll probably need some trimming here just so the window opening stays kind of concentric. Is that the right word? The same. That's the plan, anywho. So we'll get a couple tacks on here that'll buzz right through it. I'm starting to run out of scrap steel. Bought this all quite a while ago when steel wasn't so expensive. And now a bunch of offcuts. Now it's expensive. We're going to start right in the middle. Okay, so there you go. Can you see on the camera? Yeah, so the window opening now is a little goofy. Sorry to get the camera there, but uh, you guys are really in the way all the time here. So anyways, that'll be like that. It'll match. We'll weld that solid. I don't know. So I don't have any screws in it, so it's just, well, the back's screwed down. But there we go, the back's in. I don't know. I did have to do a last minute uh, zip cut and pull over because this being longer had to kind of open. So it's, I mean, it's a little goofy. It'll overhang a little bit, but uh, it's kind of the way I think it's going to go. It should be okay when you get in and out. Um, and overall, it looks the right amount of goofy as far as I'm concerned. I gotta do a little, like obviously this is, needs a little bit of trimming and stuff like that, but we're pretty good. I'm gonna start laying down some body filler on it. This should be pretty simple. Schmoot on, this got a bunch of roundness to it anyways, so who really cares what it looks like? But uh, we'll lay some filler down and then we'll start on the other side. I wish I could tell you it'd be the exact same, but I think it'll be the same idea, but probably not identical sizing. On the flip side, so this one's actually a little straighter. We don't have so much of an issue. We got her clamped down. We got the back screwed in. 
The gap isn't as bad, but still needs to be filled in with a piece. And we still have our little book to do thing. So we'll accomplish it. It'll be the same, but different. Has a pile of filler on there. It's almost ready to be sanded. So I'll get set up over there. Uh, I'm gonna sand it on the car. I'll screw down. It's easy to just kind of rub it once attached something. A couple coats of sanding and I'll be working on this in between. A little ways later, so we got the same kind of idea happening, just crudely kind of all tacked together. At this point now, it'll probably uh, come off, we'll weld all of it in, and uh, get back to the filler. Anyways, I do have these two pieces done. They're straight-ish, I did them all by hand. I mean, they're not, they're not gonna be perfect, but they're pretty good. So what we're gonna do, look at this professional transition camera work. We got a little high build uh, in a can, so we'll uh, do that. See, they don't look too bad when they're wet. So the idea of this, we'll let this kind of dry. I, think, I don't know if this stuff's two hours overnight or what it is. Uh, top coat, 30, 30 minutes. Yeah, whatever. We'll just give her kind of a blast and then uh, give her another sand. I don't know if I have, man, I should move my settling hoses. Oh well. I don't know if I have any uh, black paint. We'll have to see. I think they look presentable, eh? Good enough for my car, anyways. So there we go, I'll probably take another coat. <coughs> but uh, I put a little much on the top. Oh well. Well, that dries. I'll uh, carry out the metal work and we'll be done before you know it. I don't know. I'm happy with it. Obviously this is kind of got to sit like that maybe, but I think it's, uh, you know, old cars are weird. That maybe you could think that's just what they decided to do. <laughs> anyway, we've got this one all uh, dialed together. This light literally just went out. That's a pain. Amazon, come on, buddy. Bezos, get back to me. So these are ready. I'm going to give these a couple of coats of high build. We'll let it all set up. And then tomorrow, I think I'll uh, give it a coat of paint. I think I'm just going to go shiny black. I think there were some chrome options or something like that, but we don't have any of that. Ultimately, the dash is black. I think I'll probably paint the dash. I don't know how crazy I want to go. I mean, once we get the seats done, garnish molding's done, we got door panels in, I make two little kick panels, and uh, I mean, paint the dash? This thing's gonna look freaking fantastic. So I'll prime those, and I'll uh, see you in the morning. So, it's the next day, and uh, well, we had a little trim clad sitting on the shelf, so we're just kind of thinning it out right now. And that is what's going to be going on these uh, garnish moldings. Now, everyone's saying after the fact now that the real problem with painting the trim clad is UV protection. So we'll test it on these things. So I got it, uh, you know, sanded down. They're not perfect. You can see side to side the this one's wider than that one, and the uh, the shape is slightly different on them. But you know what? It matches. Well. It doesn't match, but it flows, that's all that really matters. So it's pretty early morning here. I want to put a couple of coats on real quick. It's got to add in the uh, hardener. We'll put that on there. And then once we'll, uh, we have in the car, we'll see what's going to be. At the end of the day, this paint was so freaking hard on the car. That's what I want. I mean, garnish molding, you're going to always have your arms on it and banging into it. So I think it'll be the best. And if it does fade, we'll try polishing it and see what happens. So I'll get this paint mixed up. We'll start blasting. You know what I need is a little... Um, touch-up gun. So I got it set so it's a pretty uh, small fan worth of paint there. We'll see what happens. Hmm. I wonder if I should have hung these. Just do one at a time. It's good for the body work.
Well, those look pretty freaking good. I think I'm done. So it's a few hours later. Um, I, I just placed the garnish moldings on because I really want to see what they look like. They're still soft, so they're not, not screwed down. So obviously they're kind of not perfect, but I think that's going to look fantastic. The black on the stainless onto a color of red I don't hate. Look at that. That worked out real slick. Filled in these gaps again. These all need to be screwed in and stuff. I did put in the um, door panel just so we can kind of see what it looks like. I didn't put the front sink because these ones are real, real tilty. I'm going to end up putting those uh, back next door so they can harden up uh, real nice. And then, man, am I excited. I, unfortunately, now i got to start storing painted pieces. It has motivated me, though, to do the back seat, get that taken care of. And then after that, I think we're going to do the same job to the dash. I mean, it's already been stripped, so we're going to sand it and build uh, little kick panels. And this thing is going to be so complete other than a ratty, ratty bench seat because I don't have any buckets yet. But that's it for me. Thanks for watching. If you wouldn't mind subscribing to the channel and leaving a comment below, it makes a world of difference for me. It doesn't cost you, uh, well, anything, just a little bit of your time. And look at all the skills you could learn. Hack together garnish moldings. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.